So I was reviewing some of the literature on the prevalence of low back pain in adults. And a catchphrase came to mind. It was a catchphrase from a kind of a popular book trilogy now movie, The Hunger Games. Anybody seen that or hear that? May the odds be ever in your favor. Do you remember that? Well, if you're willing to play the odds with low back pain, a sure bet is that about 80% of adults will experience low back pain at some point in their lifetime. Those are not good odds. Kind of put another way, one in five will experience low back pain in the next year. What's the number one referral for physical therapy? Low back pain. Number two reason for seeing a healthcare professional? Low back pain. Second to what? The cold, the flu. It's prevalent. How do we address it? There's good news. The good news is that about 80% of those who get low back pain, the symptoms resolve on their own in about 12 weeks. The bad news is about 10% of those who get low back pain will experience chronic low back pain. If anyone's had low back pain, of course, severity varies, but as the name implies, it's pain in the low back, but it's pain everywhere. Pain while standing, pain while walking, Pain while sitting, pain while sneezing. How? Yeah, so pain with everything you do. So what do you do? You lie down. Is that a good thing for treatment of low back pain? Well, there's a treatment plan that is often put into place for these folks. It includes a variety of therapies, if you will. Obviously, pharmaceutical is one of them. But exercise therapy is a big part of that. Uh, specifically exercises like spine stabilization exercises. So what I'm not going to tell you, okay, so the message is not this, that when we look at the research, land-based programs are inferior to aquatic-based programs and returning people to everyday activity who have low back pain, it minimizes their, it's not the case. And it's largely because we have such a paucity of research, such a small amount of research in the area of aquatics and low back pain. Now, there are some studies out there, and they show equal benefits. But my message is going to be a little bit different here. It's, it's not whether one's better than the other. It's the difference in getting to that point. And I would like to share with you a couple of studies, or at least specifically one study, uh, some of the results that we've observed with patients with low back pain and healthy individuals in an aquatic environment and how it influences their muscle activity. This is critical for development of, of spine stabilization exercises. That is, if we understand the muscle activity, then we can better sort of formulate a therapy that leads to better functional outcomes. So, in fact, I'm going to have you do it, uh, um, one of these exercises because this first exercise, we had individuals with low back pain and healthy individuals perform this in water and on land. It's a very popular spine stabilization exercise. It's meant, to not, it's meant to minimize the load placed on the, the disc, which is often referred to as the sort of the cause of some low back pain symptoms. It bulges and puts pressure on surrounding nerves. It's called the abdominal hollowing exercise. Now, I know, I know there's some physical therapists in here who could guide you through this better than me, but I want you to visualize your belly button. Got it? Visualize your belly button. I want you to pull your belly button back to your spine and up. Okay, so back and then up. That's the abdominal hollowing exercise. We monitor muscle activities, the, the muscles that surround the, the spine and the trunk during patients performing that on land and in water. What we observe is less muscle activity in water. Okay, now that's, at first you might think, well, that's a bad thing, but again, when we look at exercises for low back pain, the idea is to not necessarily load the spine vertically. And what happens with many activities for spine stabilization on land is they're performed in a horizontal position to minimize the load placed on the back. And they're not able to stand in a vertical position and perform these exercises. In the aquatic environment, because of buoyancy and all these other features that we've talked about, it appears that you can engage those muscles at a more optimal level in water than on land. That's right, a more optimal level. There's a cutoff they call 40% of maximal voluntary contraction. And in the water, it's always below 40%. That's good news. Because most activities that you prescribe to someone with low back pain in the water will probably not activate the muscles above that 40% level. It allows for training on endurance and motor control, which are key parameters for rehabbing individuals with low back pain.
So that's good news. There are some many other differences, and I, I would like to list some others, but let me just share one more before I give you my take-home message here. And that is, when you perform these activities in a more vertical plane, which you can't do on land with these patients, again, they have to lie down to perform exercises with the pain they have on land. That's functional. That's specificity, which are key to returning people to everyday activities, okay? There's compliance. I heard Dr. Nagel talk about compliance. Studies on low back pain patients going through programs almost always report higher compliance levels. That's an indication of patient satisfaction. That's an important message. So the take-home message is this. The odds are not in our favor. We will likely get low back pain at some point in our lifetime. How do we treat that? We treat it through exercise therapy. The aquatic environment appears to be an ideal environment for treating patients with low back pain. It's underutilized. Let's make an effort to bring it to them. Thank you.